Starlink. What is this? Real quick, since most of you already know what this is, this is satellite internet. And it's very, very important. It's not for your Instagram, your TikTok, during the grid down. This is for emergency communication. This is for emergency research because you might be on your own. You might have to learn how to dress a wound. You might have to learn basic veterinary emergency care. You name it. What you didn't prepare for now, this might give you a second chance when there is no YouTube, there is no internet, there is no ability to just find the answer in a mission critical, time critical environment like we're used to right now for far less important things. This also allows you to communicate through voice over IP, through Wi-Fi calling, through SMS messages that goes through internet. That in itself is probably the most important thing because if you have no cell signal, whatever the reason, the towers are degraded, they're destroyed, the cell towers are overloaded like they were after 9-11, you need the ability to communicate with your family members, your loved ones, your best friends, your colleagues, your students, etc. You need the ability to let them know what the next steps are. And without communication, there really is nothing else. So the Starlink sets up like this. And you basically need two things, clear view of the sky and a power source. So we have step one. And you see, I've been using this quite a bit, a little bit dirty. Forgive the lack of elegance here. And you'll see that it's in stow position. Once I connect it to the app wirelessly, it will come to life. So for step two, with a power source, you have a few options. Now, I always prefer solar. Why? Because you never know when the emergency is going to happen, and you never know how long the emergency is going to last. With solar, you can take care of that uncertainty where a gas power generator, a propane power generator, etc., will not give you that indefinite capability. Solar, as long as there's sun and you, as long as you have the ability to harness it, you basically have infinite power day after day. So what we're going to try is a very small portable power bank. This is going to be made by Goal, Goal Zero and it's the Sherpa 100, which means it's 100 watts. So that's relatively small. And according to the specs, you should be able to run this thing with under 80 watts. So. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. The main picture, the macro, is this is satellite internet. This allows you to do pretty much everything that you can do now with your cellular internet connection or your home internet connection. It might be a little bit slower if you have cable or fiber, but it'll get the job done. And the reason why this is so groundbreaking, in case you weren't already convinced, is that in the past, your satellite options for internet mainly consisted of Viasat or HughesNet. And the limitations on that were you couldn't bring it with you. It was generally a fixed mount installed by a professional that had to align it with the overhead satellites. The second problem was that those that constellation of satellites that Viasat and HughesNet used, they were about 22,000 miles away. So the latency, which means the delay from sending the signal, retrieving the signal was extremely long. So long that it made many applications of what you're commonly used to using the internet for, just impractical. Things that were real time were basically off limits. So you couldn't do voice over IP, you couldn't do video conferencing. You couldn't even make phone calls because it'd be like the Cape Canaveral you know, control center trying to communicate with the astronauts and having to wait several seconds for the two-way communication. Just wasn't practical. Now, because Starlink uses a constellation of low Earth satellites, the latency is just a few milliseconds. It's no longer near 400 to 800. It's, you'll see, very, very short. So short that you can actually use it to make Wi-Fi calls through your phone. So a couple of tips. If you're going to have this for emergency use, which I plan to, and I'm going to pause the subscription after I've activated it, after I've signed up, and keep it just in the box for possibly years. But I do enjoy playing with it and showing it off. And I think a lot of people are interested in seeing how practical this thing actually is for many uses. Especially if you have a Sprinter, an RV, you do a lot of backcountry camping, but you still want to pretend like you're at work. If you work for Elon Musk, uh, he's probably going to fire you. But if you want to pretend to work while you're working outside in very remote environments where there is no service, there is no cellular, there's no water, there's no power, there's nothing. You're on your own. Internet is becoming less of a luxury, more of a utility. 
And with internet, you basically can close that gap. You can stay off grid for as long as you have water and food. And if you have the ability to take care of both of those needs when you're out there, you can stay off grid indefinitely. You have your solar for your power, you have your shelter, you have your heat, and now you have your internet. So if you do want to stay connected to the outside world, this would be your best option, perhaps. There's plenty of other options, but I haven't found anything that gets the job done as well as Starlink. So let's set it up and let me show you how this thing actually works. So I recommend you don't let this cable get tangled. It's extremely long and hidden with that, with the exact same color, almost the same gauge of wire cable is the power cord. So this is what you're going to plug into your power source, your generator, your portable power station. I know I love the EagleFlow Delta Pro. Uh, that would power this thing for days easily. And if you have a power station that has pass through charging, that means you can charge the power station while you're passing through power. So theoretically, you could run this thing indefinitely if you have the ability to store power and you're generating more power than you're using. And you can see how they've really created a good watertight seal, both on the power cable and on, I don't know what this cable would actually be called. It looks like a modified USB connection. It wouldn't necessarily be the, the LAN or Ethernet cable, but this is the cable that comes from the satellite. So you can keep this outside. It's designed to be used in the rain and the snow. It has its own built-in heater that you can activate from the app in case you have it in the snow and snow is landing on it. It'll actually burn, melt the heat off from its own power source. But I recommend keeping that off if you're in most parts of Western United States. So what we do is take this cable and then there's a modem that this comes with. And this does several things. So this is a wireless modem. So it creates your Wi-Fi network that is pretty good distance. I mean, you can put this thing, you know, up to 70 feet outside, run this long cable inside to your modem. And now you have Wi-Fi for basically the whole first floor of a normal house. Now it doesn't have cat six, you know, it doesn't have an ethernet connection on the back, on the bottom. Um, I don't need that, but maybe somebody might. So I'm sure there's going to be a solution for that for those who need it hardwired. But again, let's go, let's focus on the macro before we get into the micro and confuse everyone. So first you plug in the power here, all right? And then push it in all the way because you can see it's got that watertight grommet to keep the water from coming into contact. And then you take the other end of your cable, make sure you don't get these things tangled because it's a pain to untangle and you don't want to do sharp bends because that'll damage the individual wires within the cable. Look for the flat side and that faces towards the front, flat side, plugs in. It's also well shielded, a lot of dust on there for my recent use of this. And it also only fits one way. You see how it's angled there. Obviously it won't, well, you know, no, it won't fit that way. It only fits that way. All right, so plug it in there. And then once you have power, there'll be a little light that shows you that it's active. All right, so plug that in. And if, for example, you have the power source inside, you have your generator or you have your whole home backup, then you would bring this inside. This is obviously a lot less water resistant than the satellite. So bring this inside, then your Wi-Fi is even closer to where you're actually using it, and then just use the length of this cable to keep this thing outside. All right, so, oh, my feet are a little bit dead here. Whew. Okay, I shouldn't have sat like that that long. All right, so for our power source, we're gonna use one of my kits. I always keep everything in kits because I have a lot of cables that go for this. You can never really have too many USB cables. First of all, you're gonna lose them, they're gonna break, you're gonna loan them out, and you always want more than you think you're going to need. So this is the power station, and it can be recharged from USB-C, which you could charge from your car, you could charge from obviously your house, you could charge it from a solar panel. And you can see it's got a 22 volt input for the solar panel. So you could just leave this thing out. I wouldn't keep it out in extreme weather, in rain, etc. But as long as you're 
covering it, not letting it get too hot, and you have a solar panel on it, this could basically run all day and power your devices with pass-through charging. So what we're gonna do is plug it into this inverter. This unit has its own 100 watt, 110 VAC, voltage AC, inverter. Modified sine wave, not pure sine wave. And it has you know a fake ground, but we're gonna rely on that. So what we're gonna do is turn it on here, turn on the inverter. There'll be a little blue light that you probably can't see, but it's on. And now we're gonna plug in the Starlink. Okay, so let's give that a try. So I'm taking this, plugging in the power here, and moment of truth, see if we have the light on the bottom. We do. Let's see, and now Wonder Dogs always has to come over and help me out, usually Ned. Ned, you're gonna get zapped with electromagnetic radiation here. You're ruining my video, dude. You're sending from the satellite. It's gonna go right through your dog brain into space. Don't wanna do that. Oh no, double poodle. The film is ruined. Oh my god. Okay, so they're gonna demonstrate and he's gonna try to eat the dead cat off my mic. Buddies, down down. So alright, I hear it. There's a little electronic vibration coming out of it. I can hear it. And what I recommend you do is download the app while you have Wi-Fi because this is gonna be a chicken and the egg problem. If you wait until the emergency to unpack this thing and use it. Well, you can't download the app if there's no internet and you can't use this thing without the app. So how are you going to start this thing up without internet? That's why you wanna make a few settings now while you can. You wanna download the app, install the app, sign up, get logged in during a normal time, during your you know blue sky event, so to speak, before everything turns to crap. And you also want to make sure your phone, at least one phone, if not all your phones, have Wi-Fi calling enabled. It's not always as simple as toggling on Wi-Fi calling. Sometimes you need to actually register with the E911. You need to authorize your carrier to give you Wi-Fi calling. And the advantage of that is now you can make phone calls through your satellite. All right, so let's take a look at the app. All right, so the cool thing about Starlink is that it is portable. You can move it. But every time you move it to a new location, it does have to reconfigure itself. It has to realign to the current satellite constellation. Now, it'll do that on its own. You don't have to do that, but you do have to use the app. So we do have an obstruction. It's that house over there. So this is suboptimal. This would be fantastic if we were in you know, a large field somewhere, but we're in a residential area, so suboptimal. But at least we do have regular Wi-Fi as a backup if this totally fails. All right, so it's loading the obstructions. You don't have to do any of this, but you know, while you wait, you might as well. And of course, we could connect solar panel to that thing just to make it last all day and most of the night. So it says this is a decent spot for your Starlink. And it found you know, some obstructions, just like I figured it would with that house. But let's give it a try, see if it works. It won't be great, but we'll go back and then we're gonna do a speed test. So we're already connected now. That's it. We're on the Starlink Wi-Fi. And I'll go back to the settings and show you. The power bank overheated. This was in the sun earlier, and it still is in the sun. I should keep this out of the sun. The only thing that needs to go directly in the sun is the solar panel. So can you hear that? You can hear the electromagnetic radiation, it sounds like. So that's probably not something I want to routinely walk in front of. I know in the uh, Navy antenna field, you rope it off. You don't want to be walking routinely in front of that thing. So take a look at how much power we're drawing. And we are at, let's see if you can see the screen here. Sorry about the, ref the refresh rate here. It's showing 86 watts, 85 watts. We're on AC power, 85 watts. So 87 watts, it's, it's climbing, but we're still within the max. While well, we're climbing, 88 watts. So we are able to power, yes, you can power the Starlink from the Sherpa. 
totally new location, several hundred miles away from the last time we used this. So it's locking on to different satellites. It's figuring out where we are. And then next time after we use this again tomorrow or the next day, it will start up much quicker. I've tested that and you can turn off the satellite, you can restart it, reboot it, and it comes to life almost immediately. It doesn't take you know the 10 or 15 minutes that it does when you go to a totally new location. But that's not a problem because the other satellites from HughesNet or Viasat for civilian use are not even portable. So this is a feature that you don't even have the option with other satellite dishes for internet. See, if you go into settings, you can reboot this thing, you can change the Wi-Fi password, you can do the snow melt configuration. So right now I'm gonna keep this off. We're not gonna need snow melt configuration. That's obviously gonna take more energy if you have it to preheat. You can stow it. So I'm not gonna hit that yet because we're trying to use this thing. But when you hit stow, you'll see that momentarily it pauses and then it folds almost vertical, which makes it a lot easier to store because that's two pieces, right? The base is one piece, the satellite platform with its pole is the second piece. That's two pieces. So it's got a little motor in there that'll power activate and power actuate the, the motor so it folds flat. Sorry, I'm, I think I fried my brain standing in front of that satellite dish for too long. If you have Wi-Fi problems, you can factory reset, reset the Wi-Fi. Reset. You can set up another one. I don't know why you need to do that in the same location. Um, and then there's the advanced where you get all the data readouts. Um, it shows you your uptime, shows you your debug data, um, which you can send if you're having issues. You can reboot the Starlink, you can reboot the Wi-Fi. And then over the network, you can see how many people are using your Starlink as well as the signal strength to those devices. So you, know, you can see the IP address that it's using, uh, whether it's using the five gigahertz or 2.4, the signal strength, right? So 70% signal strength right now. You can go to statistics. It'll show you the uptime, any outages you've had, as you've used it, and then you can do the speed test, which is looks like an UCLA speed test, but it actually is quite accurate. I've compared it to the actual speed test. And that's always over here under speed. So you have visibility, you have, so it's at 1%. If you leave this overnight, it'll finish the visibility check, it takes about 12 hours, and that's, you know, what can I say? It's necessary because every time you go to a new place, it can't just assume that the same obstructions or lack of them that you had in your last location will be the same here. So it, it has to scan the sky to give you the best performance, right? So 1%, still got a ways to go. We'll leave that on overnight if we want. And then there's range. So you can walk around your house to get the Wi-Fi signal. And then you can see the summary map of your home's Wi-Fi signal and improve Wi-Fi performance. So, you know, you want to keep the camera on. And then, you know, as you walk away, you're going to start to see that you know, the signal is degrading. There's going to be interferences, you know, physical interferences, electromagnetic interferences. And this just builds you a map of where your Wi-Fi connection, your signal, is going to be ideal. Right, so you think if you bring your wireless modem into your house and you walk around the house, you'll be able to see, okay, the green, that's where I want to stay.